what more are you hearing about what happened to Mr. Crisco? Okay, this is definitely a bizarre turn in an already unusual race, given uh, Clay Aiken's entry into politics as a former American Idol star. Now, what we're learning is that Keith Crisco died in a fall at his home about midday Monday. It, it, his injuries he sustained um, were fatal, and it just uh, shocked the North Carolina political world, for sure. He's being remembered as a dedicated public servant, served four years as the state's Commerce Secretary at a at the height of the economic downturn and then ran a really solid campaign for Congress. You know, he, a well-known man in the region, a well-respected businessman, as you pointed out. This was a razor thin or more, I guess we should probably say, a neck and neck primary race right up to the moment that this news was announced. What the, where does this leave the race? The race, the two candidates were separated by 369 votes and the official vote canvassing is today that would certify those results. Crisco would have needed to pick up about 90 some votes in order to force a recount. There weren't enough ballots outstanding to put him over the top. The race finished about 41 percent to 40 percent. So this is one of the closest races in North Carolina in the primary and, and it wasn't expected to be this way. Clay Aiken with his name and obviously uh, some money that would follow his candidacy was expected to show quite well, but uh, Crisco ran a great campaign, put nearly a half million dollars of his own money into it, and forged relationships across the spectrum. He's very well known in North Carolina, and there are as, as many Republicans as Democrats coming out and uh, mourning his death. Absolutely. And Clay Aiken has responded. He had said that he's putting, he's suspending his campaign at least for today. But what does that mean kind of in the immediate future going forward? There's a tweet that Clay Aiken uh, sent out yesterday that he's suspending all campaign activities as we pray for his family and friends. But what does that mean then? I mean, the, the campaign is as, as raw as it seems. The campaign must go on at some point. It will. The, the main impact here is that there won't be a recount. Um, regardless of how the tally turns out, the State Board of Elections officials say they're not going to go ahead with the recount given that Crisco was going to concede and obviously given his un untimely death. Mm -hmm. But his death does leave a void in this race. By not being able to concede, get out there publicly, support Clay Aiken, stand next to him in some cases, his supporters are left knowing whether Crisco supported Aiken. This race got nasty at points with both sides attacking each other and Democrats will need to coalesce behind one candidate in order to win in the fall. And this was the Democratic primary in this for this congressional seat. And Renee Elmers, who has held this seat, a Republican, I think for two terms now. And Mitt Romney won North Carolina in 2012. It's a likely Republican, uh, likely to remain a Republican seat. But what are Clay Aiken's chances, do you think? This is a sprawling nine-county district that was drawn this way to benefit Republicans. Mitt Romney took 60 percent of this district well ahead of how he finished in North Carolina, and incumbent Renee Elmers took 56 percent. It definitely leans Republican. Aiken has a hope in that he's well known. It's a name that many people know, and that's the first obstacle for a politician to overcome. He's also expected to be quite well funded and can probably put up a good fight against Ray Elmers. Will it be enough? That's the question. It could be closer than previous races, but it still leans Republican.